Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to this Hands On with Maxon intro to rigging workshop. My name is Ellie and I'm a trainer at Maxon. And once again, I'm joined by a New York animator and longtime C40 artist. And the guy that we've, we've got to know over the last kind of four sessions of this workshop, Joe Herman. How's it going, Joe? Pretty well, pretty well. Nice to see you again. And uh, wonderful to be with everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Yeah, so we've got a few people already in the questions saying hey. So we have Jim from Chicago bringing the coffee and wearing his helmet to keep his head from exploding. Uh, with all this <laughs> right. great oh, knowledge. Jim, okay, I saw you on Twitter. Hi, Jim, how are you? Keep that like helmet that on. Yeah, and also hey to Ben from Munich. We've got Charles from Toronto. We've got Hannah from Hamburg, and then we've got Neil. Hey to Drake as well. Week five. I know, I can't believe we're on week five already. That's crazy. Yeah. And we've got Christian yeah. from Germany. We've got David, uh, who's in Seattle. So we have people, um, you know, all over. We have Aram, Robert, Anders, Freddie. Um, yeah, it's so nice to have you all on. We've got, you know, Great. our regulars who have been here with us, Joe. Haven't yeah, we? I appreciate that. And uh, the advent, the journey continues today. So it uh, does absolutely. Um, so yeah, speaking of the journey that we've been kind of covering over this entire workshop, here is a quick overview for anyone who maybe as this is maybe the first session they're attending. This is part five, so we've already actually done parts one to four, and they can be found on the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel. So in a little bit, I'll show you where you can find that, so you can actually recap and go through those sessions if you want to. They're all time stamped as well, so you can always flick through and find the stuff that's relevant for you. Today, part five, and then next week, I do want to mention that next week we don't have a session. So if you just check out the dates on this page now, you'll notice that April 13th, there isn't actually a session. And what we're doing, so you've got next week off, so you can recap all the great stuff over these last like five parts. And then on April 20th is when we're going to be running part six. So I just wanted to, to make, make a note of that just in case anyone logs in next week and you're worried because we're not here. Don't worry, it's the following. Yeah, week. you can catch up on the other classes or you could take a vacation, but you can study. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Have, have a week off or have a week of going through those previous sessions. I don't and, see the chat, by the way. I, I don't know why. Um, oh, let me hang on one sec. There you go. Now you should be able to. I'm hoping you can now. Well, I, I guess um, I guess nobody wrote anything, but uh, there is it, some stuff in there. I've just made you an organizer, so I'm hoping you should now be able to see that chat. It might take a sec to kick in. Okay, maybe it'll kick in. I'll let you know. Keep yeah. going anyway. Cool. <laughs> So as a quick reminder, these sessions are recorded and get uploaded onto the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel, along with all the other great sessions that the entire team are doing. And Joe's also been putting together some great project files. And so I'll show you where you can find those in, in a little bit. Um, and also in the handout section of GoToWebinar is a PDF that includes all of these links. So links to our events, links to all of the project files for this, as well as links to the YouTube channel. And don't forget, you can follow Joe on Twitter and Instagram at Joe Herman Artist and, um, you know, connect with him through through socials. Yeah. And uh, absolutely. And also, I do have a YouTube channel that I'm going to be putting little animation tests on. It's called Legend Multimedia. So you might want to check that out, too. Oh, cool. What I'll do for the next session, I'll, I'll add it on to, to that yeah. slide as well. well yeah, yeah, we'll do that on the next one. Cool. Thank you. Cool. So yeah, as we said, part five. I can't believe we're already on. Um, you know, the five out of six um, sessions. It, it's crazy. But Joe, do you want to do you want to talk us through a little bit about what we're going to be diving into today? Yeah. So so far, what we've been doing is, you know, we've been looking at um, a lot of rigging techniques, IK, FK. You know, we've talked about how to rig feet. Uh, we talked about. Um, point weighting and parenting and all, all these fundamental things. And last week we got into the character object, which is sort of this, um, you know, really good professional rig that comes in Cinema 4D uh, that allows you to rig characters with it. And we started by uh, building the rig uh, uh, last week and, um, 
and then we were adjusting the different points of the rig uh, to fit the character. So we were like fitting it. And so we did that last week. And this, this is in many ways, uh, to a large extent anyway, a continuation of that after the building and the adjusting of the rig, then we need to weight the character to the rig and then we can start animating. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna finish up the process of applying the character object to our character. Uh, then we're gonna go on a, I think you have a little typo there, it should be a tour of the features uh, and controls of the character object. <laughs> and um, although you are kind of working through it. But um, so, because it has a lot of hidden features and a lot of things to make animation easier. So we wanna look at those different aspects of it uh, in order to uh, fix that. Thank you, Ellie. We'll pretend Pre like, that didn't happen. <laughs> and then we'll um, go on to, I still can't see the chat by the way, but that, but uh, it, anyway, I'll, I guess I'll have to rely on you to tell me what people are saying, but unless, you know. Yeah, through. I'm not too mm -hmm. sure why that may be because you are an organizer. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I'm more than happy to, okay. to read out, you know, the, the comments that we get yeah. and the questions that we get. And I'll it may, read them it later if I don't, if this doesn't work, uh, I'll thank you know I'll 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 um if I'm it not responding to them it's not because I... I'm being impolite or anything like that. Oh no, it may it may kick in when I share the screen over to you. It okay. might kind of okay. have a think about um, it. So then we'll then we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about also is um is an explanation and demonstration of uh, IK squash and stretch, which is allows you to get sort of cartoony type of uh, stretchy limbs okay so that's very much a part of it it's not always used obviously you might not want your characters to have that cartoony look especially if you're doing something realistic uh but we're going to talk about that and something actually that's not on this list which is going to be a large part of what we discussed today is we're going to talk about when you want to switch between fk and ik for the limbs so when you want IK hands and when you want FK hands and when you want IK feet and when you want FK feet. So that is actually going to be a large discussion because that's really important when you're animating. Uh, they're not just there for show. They're there because it's very important and useful to be able to switch between IK and FK. Finally, we were gonna talk also a little bit about IK dynamics, which lets you, for example, you can, let's say you had like a little flower or something coming out of your hat, or you had a little tail or a ponytail or, you know, or a sword on you or something like that. And to have that sort of re react with dynamics to make a bone dynamic. So w depending on how much time we have today, because we might not get sexually a lot of stuff, we might not get through everything. So we might s use that for the last class, but uh, that's what we're going to, be uh, talking about today. And then the project file is sort of left off from last week. We're going to pick up on it uh, from where we left off last week. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That sounds great. So just before we get into it, just before I chuck it over, I just wanted to show everyone where they can find the previous sessions. So if you head over to the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel, so if you do want to recap on any of the sessions that you have missed, all you have to do is scroll down and we actually have a hands-on with Maxon playlist. And here you can find, you know, parts one, two, three, and four all on there. And inside the handout section, this is what you should find. This, this page here that has a link to the project files, session recordings, and, um, you know, any other useful things that, that we think are going to come in handy throughout this workshop and each of the project files are separated into their relevant week and so as joe was just saying this is the one we're going to be working on today which you can find in the week five section if you can't see this let me know in the questions and i can link you to it that is not a problem at all so Great. joe are you ready shall I, shall I pass the screen over to you ready when you are great let me just pass this over uh, there we go. And yeah, we've got a few extra people in the chat. Saying, Sharon saying um, Max on rigging day. We've got um, Ahmed, who's happy to see everyone um, coming from Egypt. And um, yeah, hey to everyone else. Hey to also, we've got Alan from San Jose and we've got uh, Larry from Best Coast. Thanks for being here with us, everyone. Great. 
actually that's not what i wanted to show yeah yeah that's great can you see my screen yes we can okay great well that's fantastic thank you so much ellie for that wonderful introduction um oh, and uh thank you for coming along and on this ride with me and welcome no, happy to, to be here. yeah absolutely and welcome to everyone for being part of the rigging club and um explore some of the wonderful world of rigging as I said, I, I don't know why I can't really see the uh, chat, but don't think I'm ignoring you. I will read the chat later afterwards, and uh, hopefully it will start working again at some point. I but, hope so. So let's actually go ahead and get started, shall we? Let's do it. Okay, very good. So I guess I'll turn off my webcam. And uh, so this is sort of where we left off last week. Um, let me move this down. So we had created this character object and we sort of, you know, we went through first of its build, you know, its build uh, mode where we created all the different components for it. And, and then, we, then we went into its adjust, adjust mode and uh, then, we, and we remember we dragged these little points to where they basically should be. That should be where the elbow is, you know. And they were sort of like um, uh, symmetrically. So where we moved them, we 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 put the knees where they should go, and the pelvis where it should go um, here. And uh, then we set up the different foot controls. All these different things we had to put in there in order for us to be able to get the, uh, the controls on the feet, which we're gonna look at later, exactly why these things are in the, their, their, the positions that they're in. Um, and so now we are ready. So actually I backed up a couple of steps from last week because we actually went a little further than this, but I'm, but I'm just gonna redo it. So, okay, so the build mode of the character object is done and the adjust mode is done. And now we're ready to get into the binding area, okay? So um, once we're in the binding, remember this is part of the character object. I've got the character object selected and I'm in the binding tab of the character object, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lock, lock this window, this so it stays on this window here in the attributes manager. And I'm gonna go down to the different uh, components of our um, uh, thing, but you know what, let me, let me drag this in a little bit just so you can see that. So, and you know, these are the different components, the head, right? They're all just separate little meshes, little, um, polygonal objects, the teeth and the tongue, by the way, the hat, the, the eye, you know, the eyes, you can see that the eyes basically are just really just spheres. Hope that didn't gross anybody out there. Um, we've got, you know, the hands, okay, uh, over here and uh, all that stuff. So we're gonna take all of this thing, all of these things, the shoes, the body, and we're gonna drag it into the binding objects of the character object, okay? So as soon as we do that, first of all, they appear in this thing. And the second thing is that what's happening is that, um, they all get a, a weight tag, okay? And um, uh, and they and a skin object gets created on top because because remember we've got them all in a subdivision surface here to smooth out all the polygons, otherwise it looks like terrible. So and then that's in a null, so that way we don't have to have a separate subdivision surface object for each individual um mesh we just have one and put them all in a null and then this one works for everything under that null and we've got one skin tag and it's smart enough it makes one skin tag we don't have to have a separate skin it's not a skin tab tag it's a skin object we don't have to have a skin object for every um one in the in the list we can just have one on the top there Okay, now when we do that, by the way, 
our character is actually auto weighted. Okay, if I bring up my um, weight manager and put it over here, and if I were to um, select, for example, let's say the body, and I were to hide my subdivision surfaces or turn it off, disable it, you can see that actually it's auto weighted already to this. And it does a fairly decent job to auto weight it, actually. If I were to actually animate it, it would look okay. As a matter of fact, I can hop over to the animate tab. And you can see that if I select, for example, like the foot control, okay. And if I were to, you know, start doing it, it actually does, you know, it's, it's kind of weighted. You could actually start animating this guy without actually having to weight the whole thing, okay. If I were to take the pelvis down. You know, things are actually kind of like, you know, weighted in a certain way. However, um, you know, auto weighting, you're always going to have some sort of an issue when it comes to auto weighting. So what what the pros do is that they just start over again and they weight the whole thing the way they want to weight it. Um, so what, what we're, and that's what we're going to do here. We're not going to really mess around with the auto weighting, but there is auto weighting involved here. And if you're, if you really want to, you can actually go ahead and um, and uh, uh, use that uh, to if you don't feel like weighting the character by hand. So what I'm going to do now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the subdivision surfaces, click on the body thing. Okay, all the bones are selected here because they're all orange. And I'm just going to zero out their weight. So we're really going to start at, at, at no weights. Okay. And maybe I'll, I'll hide the belt as well because it's kind of in the way of the body. Okay. And I'm going to hide the head too. Because right now we're just going to concentrate. And what the heck, I'll hide the hands. We're just going to concentrate on weighting the, um, the body. So. Let's make sure that in the character objects, we're under binding. We've got to be under binding, okay? So, so, or maybe we don't have to, but it's better to be under binding. So let's click on the body and uh, let's go to points mode and that's so we can see our points and we can start weighting it. Now, in, like I said, I'm going to be weighting the cage, okay? Which is sort of like the low resolution polygons before the subdivision surfaces has come along and smoothed everything out. But I just wanted to let you know that you can actually wait with the subdivision uh, surfaces on. You don't have to just wait. Like for example, if I hover over a point here, you'll see it's weighted at zero. But like for example, if I choose the chest joint and I click on this and I apply it to the chest, apply this point to the chest, uh, joint okay if i hover over it it's actually now weighted 100 percent to the chest okay so you can actually weight it the only thing you're not going to see is you're not going to see the colors which are a useful indication however sometimes you might want to wait in subdivision surface mode let me actually first of all undo that but um yeah. but because like, for example, take a look at this area right along, right around its groin, okay? So there's one, two, three points there, okay? But if I put the subdivision surfaces on, you can't really see all the points there. They're like, they're like maybe if you go inside the model, you can sort of see it. But to actually see it here, they're not inside of it. So sometimes you want to have the subdivision surfaces on and you want to, you want to wait in this mode because you get more access to the points. Okay, so let's start by actually uh, waiting. Let's right in the middle of his body. We might as well just start right here. So actually, let's hide. Let's actually go to a front mode, right? And then you can see that what I want to do is I want to weight these points 50% to what's called spine two and 50% to what's called spine three, okay? So as you might know by now, 
if you select both of these points, which we've done, both of these joints, which we've done in previous classes, and then we were to, you know, choose the selection tool. Okay, actually, I'm going to unlock this because this is still locked from before. So I'm going to unlock that, select that. If it says visible only, I'll uncheck visible only. So I'll select this whole ring of points. Okay, and if I just hit apply selected, that is applied, but in, in subdivision surface mode, you can see it's 50% to each joint. So it's working. But, and if I uncheck that, you'll see that now you see the colors because now you're not in subdivision surface mode anymore. I hope that makes sense. So let's go to visible only again. So there you go. Um, we've, started, we've started weighting this to the joints of the character object. Okay. Now, similarly, what I want to do, actually, I want to start waiting again with the weight tool. It's up to you what tool you want to use to weight. You can select the points and apply selected like this, or you can use the weight tool. If you're going to start getting the sy symmetrical weighting like we are, it's better to use the weight tool. So that's why I'm switching to the weight tool now. So I'm going to go to the weight tool. I'm going to make sure my strength is at 100, and I'm going to make sure that my symmetry is actually on name. And I've entered a L underscore for the left and R underscore for the right, which means, once again, I've talked about this before, that when I'm waiting to bones that start with an L underscore, symmetrical points on the other side will be weighted to a bone, the same bone name starting with the R underscore. Okay, so in this way, we can allow symmetrical weighting to be happen, to, to happen, okay? Now, in the case of like some of these bones, like for example, I want these bones to be weighted 50% to the chest and 50% to spine four, these two bones. That's where I want these bones to be weighted. If I click on, they don't have an R underscore and an L underscore, okay? But the, the weight tool has the intelligence to know that if it's not a symmetrical bone, like left shoulder and right shoulder, but it's a bone like in the middle that doesn't have, it actually will do it symmetrically to that one bone, which is very useful to do, okay? It's a very useful thing. See, now you don't have to go all the way around um you could just go halfway around okay so now these both these points here okay i want to wait just to the chest so those three are going to get weighted 100 percent to the chest okay and i also want to weight all of these points okay i want to weight them and you can see it's happening symmetrically i want to weight them all to the chest 100 percent as well Okay, so we're gonna go around. Like I said, I'm doing it on the cage. You can also do it on the subdivision surface like that, okay? But you're just not gonna see the colors. Okay, so we'll do it. So this way we got the colors. It would be nice actually if they can have the colors on the subdivision surface model. That would be a nice thing. Put that on a feature request, but so we're going around, we've done this whole collar. We've weighted it to the chest bone, okay? And then the, the points on the back, let's not forget the points on the back. I'm gonna weight all of that to the chest bone, 100%. So these are at 50 and these are at 100. And everything else up there is at 100, okay? Now, let's come into the shoulder. Now, what's happening in the shoulder let me put on the subdivision surfaces, is that we have actually a little bit extra geometry here, a little bit more topology, okay, in order to maintain the roundness of the shoulder, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to, what I want to do is you see that there's this collarbone here. If I go to a front view, let me go to like a, a, a lines view, okay. Oops, wrong thing. 
Um, if you hold down the mouse button, you can, the middle mouse button, you can make the weight tool get bigger or smaller, uh, or the control in the middle. Whatever, anyway, but the thing is, I didn't want to do that, so I'm just going to leave this at 30. All right, so if you look at over here, we have we have a, a, a collarbone, okay? So this bone is going to be useful for us when we're going to be shrugging the shoulders, okay? That's what this bone is for. And then we've got a shoulder bone, which really could be also called a bicep. Okay, but they call it a shoulder, that's fine. So you got the collar and the shoulder. So what I wanna do is I want to distribute these weights. So the ones in the middle, I know that I wanna be weighted 50% to the collar and 50% to the shoulder. So let's go ahead to the, to the uh, um, arm, okay? The arm component, our arm, because we're on our arm. And we're gonna choose the collar, right? And we're gonna choose the shoulder. There's also a collar tip you can use, but I use the, I usually use the collar. So those two bones, and we're going to click, and uh, let's go to a um, perspective mode, and we're going to click those around here, okay? And now these bones are weighted 50% to each of those bones. Now, for these bones, however, which you can see better if, if I were to put the subdivision surface on. The, for these points here, what I want to do is I want to weight them 75% um, to the collar and 25% to the shoulder. And that's how I want, really want to have, like, for example, the collar bone, I want it to affect at 75%, uh, 75 and 25% to the shoulder. This one's going to be 50-50. This one's going to be 25% to the collar and 75% to the shoulder. And then these bones are going to be 100% to the shoulder. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the collar, the collar bone. Okay. I've got it to 100%. Actually, I've got, okay. Actually, this should be at 100. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the collar and I'm going to paint these 100% to the collar. Okay. Then I'm going to, in the weight tool, down here in its attributes, I'm going to sh click this down to 25%. I'll just type it in to make it easier, okay? And I'm going to choose the shoulder, and I'm going to paint it, because right now it's weighted at 100% to the collar. I'm going to make that 25%, and I'm going to paint these bo bones in absolute mode, okay, like this, and that's going to steal... 25% away and give it to the shoulder. So now look at the weighting, okay? The weighting now is 75% to the collar and 25% to the shoulder, okay? And here it's 50% to the collar and 50% to the shoulder, okay? And now I'm gonna go back to 100%, click on the shoulder, weight these 100% to the shoulder, switch back to the collar, give it 25%, okay? and paint these like that. Oh, did I ever hit? Yeah, okay. And now you'll see that these points are, are weighted 25% to the collar and 75% to the shoulder, okay? And then I'm gonna go to the shoulder now, make this back to 100%, okay? And then weight these 100% to the, the uh, shoulder joint. So I've distributed these weights like that. And you notice that it actually happens on the other side because everything is happened on the other side except instead of the L shoulder and L collar, I mean, instead of the R shoulder and R collar, it's the L shoulder and L collar. So it's happening symmetrically. And I've distributed the weights in a certain way to preserve the bending of the joints. Now, on this one down here, on these down here, maybe I want them to be less, I, instead of 50-50, just for these three down here, I want it to be uh, only 33% of, of the, um, 
of, of the shoulder. So I want to have a little bit more weight on the collar. Okay, because like, let's say I, I, I don't want them to bend as much as the shoulder joints bend. Okay, so I'm going to click on the collar. Right now they're at 50 and 50. I just got the weight tool. Okay, and uh, now that's odd. Oh, okay. Right, so we got the weight tool. Okay, so now why isn't this, what did I just press that it's not highlighting? The, uh, where's my little weight tool there? Oh, the radius went down to 30, I don't, up to zero. I don't know why, but let me break that back. There we go. So now the thing is, is that, so I'm going to back, going back to the collar and instead I'm going to make it 66.666%, okay? And now I'm going to paint it. And because I have auto normalize on, you'll notice that it's smart enough that it weighted it 66, you know, and 0.66% to the collar and only 33.333% to the shoulder. So what's happening is that it's going to be influenced more by the collar than the shoulder. It's two thirds to the collar and only one third to the collar. Whereas these joints on top are going to be uh, 50 and 50. And these over here are 75 and 25. Okay, so that's sort of where we got. So let's go on our merry way down the shoulder. These next here, next joints here are going to be 100% um, to the shoulder. Okay. And then we're going to go, and these are going to be 100% to the shoulder. Oops. Okay, and then what's going to happen for the elbow, where there's a little extra geometry to get the the joint to, to have a little bit more to work with for the deformation. We're gonna do something similar. So let's let's weight these 100% to the shoulder, okay? Switch to the forearm twist one. Now that's interesting. Why do we have two joints here for the forearm, okay? Because why shouldn't there just be one joint like the shoulder joint? And that's because of the twisting of the wrist. So we'll see that more, but really what's happening is that when you twist the wrist, this bone only twists half the way of the amount of this bone, okay? And this way you can get the wrist to twist without it looking really weird, okay? So we're going to wait. So we waited these points to 100% of the shoulder, and we're going to switch to the forearm twist one, okay? We're going to we actually, we actually, they're at 100%, actually, even though this says 66%. Why? Okay, why did it, why does it say 66%? But when I clicked it, when I weighted it, it said 100%. And that's because we have auto normalize on, and auto normalize is trying to stop us from weighting points to less than 100%. Okay, so, uh, Really, I had forgotten to make it 100, but that's okay because auto normalize st stood in there and, and corrected it. But I'm going to go down to 25% now and I'm going to click a forearm twist one and I'm going to click these joints here. I'm sorry, not those. We don't want to do those. We want to do these, these three. One, two, three. And then you can see now we've got 25% for the forearm twist one, which is this joint and 75% to the shoulder, okay? So that should be clear. I hope that's clear to everybody what's happening. So now we're gonna go to the uh, shoulder and forearm twist one at 100% each because these I want to do at 50-50, okay? Like that, there we go. They should be 50-50 between those two joints. And then what's happening is that we're gonna go ahead now to the forearm twist one, we'll do these at 100, okay? We'll switch back to the shoulder, okay? We'll put it back to 25%, okay? 
okay, and we'll paint them. Now that it's going to be 75-25, 75% on forearm twist one and 25% on the shoulder. And then we'll go to forearm twist one, and these are all going to be at 100%, um, you know, weighting like that. And now for this one, okay, this is actually in the middle of the arm. We, Like I said, I want the arm to twist. I want the points on the arm to twist. I don't want them to just all of a sudden, you know, twist so much that, that it's going to look weird. So we want to click forearm twist one and forearm twist two and weight these at 50% between the two. Okay. So then that does its job. And then this one is kind of like, you know, um, let's say, for example, these will weight them at, on twist to 100%, okay, like that, but we'll give it a little bit of influence, like, well, it looks like it's right in the middle, doesn't it? But we'll give it a little influence on the um, wrist, okay? We're going to give it a little info. The wrist is disjoint, okay? So we're going to give that little influence on the wrist and how much influence I guess we'll give it, well, we'll give it 50%. So it's going to be twisting. So like that, I could have selected both of them at the same time, but I'm doing it separately. So it's getting 50% of the wrist. And then these, I'll give it most influence on the wrist. Okay. So we'll give it 100% to the wrist. Okay. But, you know, I could give it a little influence onto the forearm twist, too. We'll give it, like, you know, maybe 25% to the uh, wrist. So this way we're going to get, like, a nice – what we want to do is we want to get, like, a nice – here's an example why we might want to go ahead and uncheck visible only. So that's why we're getting the ones on the inside, you know, as well as the outside. But you have to be careful when you do that, that you're not going to select any other joints. Okay. So there, that, that's all weighted. Okay. And it's all being done symmetrically. Okay. So it's, it's 25% to forearm twist two and 75% to the wrist. Okay. So now, now that sort of upper body is all weighted. Okay, so now let's go on to the lower body. Okay, and so for these joints, which is right around the waist, we want to go to this uh, pelvis base, which is this joint, and uh, spline two. No, spline, uh, spine, spine. So pelvis, so, oh, spine. Wait a second. Let me just see this for a second. Spine three is that one. Spine two. Oh, here's spine one. Okay, it's, it's, it's over here. So we want to go to pelvis base and spine one. Okay, we want to, we'll, we'll go ahead to the weight tool. I'll check visible only because you can get into trouble if you leave that. And we're just going to weight those 50% to those two joints, so now they're 50-50, okay? All right, so moving right along. So now what we want to do is, like, like I said before, I am going to need to, to um, go back to subdivision surfaces because here's it's going to get a little bit uh, different. So this point way on the bottom of this, I want to wait to the pelvis, okay? Um, so... So what we'll do is we'll click on the pelvis base and we'll weight that to the pelvis, okay? Like that. And then, uh, so that's good. And then for for these, for this, for these joints, I want to weight the, the ones where the leg bends right here, these points. I want to weight 50% of the pelvis and 50% to the hip 
R. So pelvis is selected. I'll select the hip R, which is that one right here. And I'll go around and I will take the weight tool and I will weight it like that. And then that's working, 50, 50, okay, 50. And if you want, you can switch back to the shaded view to see what's going on color-wise, and you can have that, okay? So that's 50-50. Now, at this point, I forgot to wait, okay? So I want to wait that to the pelvis, just 100%. Okay, and the one in the front, too, that's weighted to the pelvis. Okay, so... Now let's keep moving down the leg. So let's go to the hip here and then these get weighted at 100%. Okay. Like I said, I have auto normalize on, so I'm, uh, it's saving me from getting into trouble, but really be better if I slid that back up to 100. So let's go ahead and weight this, go around and weight this to be 100 and 100. Let me just make sure that goes to the pelvis. Yeah, everything else is good. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to weight these to the pelvis. I mean, to the thigh. Okay. Now, once again, these also get weighted to the to the uh, thigh. Okay. But and like the elbow, we're going to do something similar to what we did on the elbow because what we want to do is we want to weight these 100% to the thigh. And then we want to go to the knee and we want to take 25% away from it to give it to the knee. Okay, and now that's 75, 20%. Go back to 100 here, choose the knee and the hip both. And we're going to weight these to 50, 50. Okay, and we'll go ahead for the uh, knee, we'll weight this at 100, like that, and uh, go back to the hip, steal away 25%, I mean, give 25% back to the, to the uh, hip, and then go back to the knee, go back to 100, and these all get weighted at 100. like that okay so that's cool okay we're going to go ahead now to the that also gets weighted at 100 okay and now what i want to do is i want to hide my boots or shoes okay and i want to go ahead and i also want to weight these joints these points to be at 100 percent. and like i said this is all happening symmetrical so i only have to do this once on one side of the character all right so it looks like the body is all weighted, okay? So we can now hide the body if we want to, and we can show our shoes because now we want to weight the shoes, okay? So we choose the shoes. Now the shoes have auto weighting on it, so we have all the bones selected. If they're not selected, you could just select this weight tag and they all get selected, and we're going to zero out the weights for the shoes because we also want to weight this by hand okay so for these over here we want to weight 100 percent to the hip and oops you're getting a weird gray color even though the bone is pink and why is that because i forgot all of these points are selected so that's not good because we're weight if i do that look how many weights that i did to those points i weighted a little bit to every single joint okay so you don't want to do that Okay, you can see that's a lot of weights there. So you don't want to do that. So what you do want to do, though, is select. This is the right leg. Okay, now, now don't select the left leg. You want to select the right leg. So the right leg, we want to select the hip. Okay, it's called the hip. I, I don't think that's such a, oh, no, not the hip, the knee. Okay, let me just make sure that, well, all right, we'll see later if I, it's very easy to make mistakes when you're doing this because it's confused, can be confusing. So we're going to select all those points to the uh, to the knee. 
Okay, let me just look at something at the body. I want to make sure that on the body, yeah, that looks right. R, R. You just don't want to have L's in there, okay, because you're working on the right side of the character. Oops. All right, so you got that going. Now, what, and what do I do with these points? I also want to weight them 100%, oops, to the knee, R knee. Now, for the ankle, which is going to be right here, okay, this, these points right here, for the ankle, I want to weight them, I want to weight these three, 50% to the, to the uh, um, knee and 50% to the uh, foot. So we're going to go foot. Actually, they call it ankle. Okay, so 50% to the knee and 50% to the foot. And here we go. We're going to wait that one. We're going to wait this one. I'm in full confidence that it's doing it symmetrically because of that R and L naming convention. But these points in the front, I want to wait 100% to the ankle. Okay, because they're kind of on the ankle. You see it? So, they, so I'm just going to click here and click here. And now those are weighted onto the ankle. Okay. Now on the bottom, I want to weight all of these, okay? All of them, I want to weight to the ankle. I don't want any blending going on here with these. Okay, so like that, oops. Okay, and these two. They all get weighted. To the ankle joint okay now for these in the, right here i want to weight them 50 percent to the ankle and 50 percent to the to the what's called the ball they call it the ball so we're going to select both of those and we're going to weight them 50 percent And then the ones in the front, you might be inclined to weight them. So they're 1550, by the way, here. So you might be inclined to weight these to what's called the toes joint, but weight them to the ball. So we're going to just go ahead, weight tool, right? 100%. We're just going to weight all of these to the ball. All right. So now the boots are weighted. Okay. What else do we have to wait? So the body's weighted and the boots are weighted. Let's actually show this belt again because this belt, I just want to weight 50 and 50 to the, um, I want to choose the uh, spot, the same as the middle points on the bottom. So let's go to the belt, okay? And uh, get the weight tool. You'll see that it has weighting on it. So we're gonna, all these joints is like, I'm gonna zero out the weights. Get the weight tool, select the spine one in the pelvis base, okay? And uh, we'll just select all the points, which they are, they actually already happen to be selected. And this time, rather than use the weight tool, I'll just hit apply selected because I don't have to paint it. There's nothing, oops, they're all selected. Actually, these are all selected. So we just want to select these two points, these two joints and hit apply selected and they'll all get 50 and 50 to, towards those two joints. Okay, so now that's all done, okay? Now comes something a little bit challenging, okay? And um, slightly tedious, and that is weighting the hands, okay? The hands are a little bit hard to weight, but actually they're not really that hard. It's just, it's just, it's just, um, how should I put it? It's uh, just, something that you just got to do okay so we're going to go ahead to a top view okay let's go to this hand okay let's go to a, like a wire view okay so you can see here or maybe let's not go to a wire view um let's just go to the regular view here okay so let's click on the hand hands where are they here they are all right, and uh, 
got the wait tool. There's auto waiting there already. We're going to zero it all out because we're going to start from scratch. Okay. And here's how we're going to do it. Okay. We're going to start with these two points. Okay. We want to go to the hand, the R hand, and we want to select the um, the uh, which digit is this? I believe it's this digit. Yes. So we want to select this this joint and this joint, these two joints, and we want to weight these two 50% to each joint. Okay. And then these two joints. Okay, we want to weight a hundred percent to this joint. Okay, and then these two points we want to weight fifty percent between these two joints, and we want to do that all around the whole model, around the whole finger. Okay, and then for these points we want to go a hundred percent to the mid joint. Moving right along to the, uh, the uh, we want to select these two joints, this one and this one, these two bones, and weight those 50% to each of those, like that. And then for the rest, we just want to, we just want to weight these all at 100% to those, like that. So we've got the first sort of finger kind of done, and you'll notice it's happening on the other side as well. So now, now things are gonna get a little trickier, okay? Because for these two joints, this one and the one on the bottom over here, this one and this one, we wanna wait, we wanna wait them 50% to these two joints. Okay, so we're gonna go to the this joint, finger base on digit, and go to finger base int one, these two right here, see them? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on them, and those are gonna get weighted like that. Okay, 50% between these two. All right. Now for these for this point I actually want to weight it to four joints. I want to weight it to this joint, this joint, this joint and this joint. Okay? So we're going to take finger palm base in one finger base and then over here this one and this one. So I've selected four joints and I click here and look what happened. It weighted to 25% to each one of those joints. Okay. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to do that too. Okay. Because they're going to be influenced by all of those joints. And that's what's going to give the finger a, uh, a nice sort of look when it's going to be animated. Okay. Similarly, with this, with this point, I want to weight it to these four, okay? So somebody had asked in a previous class, you know, do you ever weight it to more than two joints? And here's an example of where you would, just one example. So I'm going to select that one, that one, this one, and this one, and I'm going to weight it there and there, and now we've got it 25% to each one. Now, I just want to select this one and this one, because I want to I want to wrote, uh, weight those 50% to each one of those two joints. Okay. Now for these two, these two, these 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 joints, this one and the one on the other side, are going to get weighted 50% uh, to each one of these joints. So we're going to select that joint and that joint, and then we're going to weight that at 50% to each one of those. Okay. Now, now the thing is, is that for um, this one and this one, these two, we're going to go ahead and and uh, wait 50% because that's where the, the 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 finger bends. Okay, that ooh ooh, I have three joints selected. That's bad. 
Okay, so whatever I did is going to be no good. Okay. So we just want this one and this one. Okay. There's two joints selected. Okay, so then there we have it. Okay, so those now are 50 and 50. We'll select this one here and we're going to do that. I know that it's a lot of work. I could actually skip ahead, but then there's some other important lessons that we would miss. So we really just have to do this work. Okay, so then we would select these two. We've got 50 50 on this, 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 and the rest gets weighted to this joint here, like that, like that, like that. Okay, so we have one more finger, we're almost done. You know, take heart that uh, we actually, so we've got that, we've got that. So we've got to weight these two to the, uh, yeah, to this joint. Okay, so we're going to weight those at 100%. We're going to select these two. We're going to weight these at 50% to each. Okay, and then we're going to go to, to the next two. And uh, actually, we're going to go to the next one, this joint. This gets weighted at 100%. And then those two get weighted at 50 And then we're going to go ahead and um, do the last one. Like that. Okay. So we're done with the fingers. Okay. Okay. So these joints, I just want to wait to the um, hand. Okay, so I mean these points I want to wait to the hand. So I'm going to find the hand joint, our hand. Here it is, to the wrist joint, which is this joint. You can see it there. Okay, I want to wait this point, these points, this point. Okay, this point, and this point. And let me hide the body. Okay, and these points here. And this one. And this one. Okay, they all get weighted to the wrist. And this one. Okay. And then what's going to happen is that for these, I want to weight to the wrist. Okay, to the wrist end to the forearm twist two. Okay, so let me find the forearm twist two. Here it is. You could have also, or you could also do it to the forearm twist 05 tip, but I'll do it on the forearm twist two and the wrist. Okay, and we're going to weight these at 50% to each one of those joints. And uh, and these, well, I can wait, give a little influence. I'll give it 100% to the wrist like that. And maybe I'll give it like 25% to the forearm twist too. Give it a little influence on the twisting. Maybe that might be too much, but you can always go back and fix it later. Okay, so now, now, now the only really hard thing that's left is the thumb, and then after that, the head's going to be lickety split. So the thing is, is that um, the hand in some ways is the hardest thing to to wait. So we're almost there. Just a little bit more patience. In this case, we might want to actually go back to the subdivision surfaces. It might be interesting, although you're not going to see the weighting. But what we're going to do is 
we can see that this bone here, okay, I want it to, so we're going to choose this thumb, our thumb. It's this one, okay? This is that bone, okay? So I want to go ahead and I want to, um, we'll stop for questions in a minute, but what I want to do is take the weight tool and I want to weight it at 100% to this joint and this joint, okay? And uh, and I will bring my subdivision service so I can see what's going on, okay? And then, so I got, I, I got this one, that's to the thumb root, that's to the thumb root, okay? And then I wanna choose the thumb root and the thumb base, these two joints, and I want to weight these, okay? Although you can't see the colors, I am weighting right now in subdivision surface mode. 50% to each of those, okay? Let me switch back to the color mode, okay? And then here I'm going to go to be 100% on the thumb base like that. And then we'll be 50% to the thumb base and thumb mid. Okay. Like that. And then the rest just go to that thumb mid joint here. Like that. And basically the, the hand is now weighted. Okay. So you'll see that the hand is weighted. Let's actually, now look, it looks like I missed some points, okay? So that's really important that I missed a point, which is I missed this point here. So this point gets weighted to the wrist, okay? So we're going to click on this point. Actually, we're going to, to the weight tool, okay, we're going to choose the wrist, We're going to weight that to the wrist. So let's see if we forgot any other points. And I did. I forgot this point. And I also want to weight that to the wrist. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this hand is weighted. Okay. So now let's quickly do the head and then we'll we'll take a little pause in case anybody has a question. So let's figure it out that we're gonna go to a side view, okay? And um, we're going to go ahead and uh, we are going to show the head. And actually, you know what? I want subdivision surfaces on. Okay. So, We've got the neck and the head and the jaw here, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, we're going to go ahead and if I turn off the um, subdivision surfaces and 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 uh, click on the head, you can see there's auto weighting. So we want to turn the auto weighting off. So we're going to zero out everything, okay? And then I'll turn on the subdivision surfaces again. I'll go to like a side view, okay? So what we want to do is, is I don't need to do this with the weight tool because I'm not going to do, it's not really, there's not, there's only one set of bones in it for the head. There's not two like the rest of the body. So we're going to select all of these points. Okay. And we're going to weight them. Actually, I want to weight them to the chest. Okay. So we're going to weight them hundred percent to the chest. Okay. And then I'm going to select all of these points and we're going to weight these 50% to the neck and 50% to the head. So we're going to select both of those joints there, and then that's going to be 50-50 there, right? Now, the rest of them, for now, I'm just going to wait 100% to the head. Okay? However, now they're all weighted 100% to the head. However, for the jaw, okay? the jaw 
I want to do something a little bit different. Okay. Let me go back to the side view. I want to take these points as well as this lower lip and this upper lip here and this upper lip here. Okay. And this and this. All those points. And I want to weight them to the jaw. So let me find the jaw. The jaw is all the way down here, actually. Okay, and I want to apply them to the jaw. So they all get weighted to the jaw. However, for the, so all of those got weighted to the jaw. Oh, it didn't go through. Oh, no. That means they all didn't go through. Well, all right, didn't take that long. Let me do this again. This gets weighted to the chest. Apply selected. This gets weighted 50 to the neck and 50 to the head. Okay, all of these get weighted to the head. Okay, and then these these, these, and these get weighted to the jaw. So now, that's right, that's on both sides now. Now, the thing is though, for this one, for these, this one, and if I go inside of the head, I'm inside of I'm inside someone's head right now. Kind of fun to be inside somebody's head. Uh, I want to select the inner one. Okay, I want to go to the other side now and select this one and also this one. Okay, and then for these, I want to weight 50% to the jaw and 50% to the head. So I got both of those selected, you see, and I'm going to apply it. And now they're weighted at 50%. Okay. Now there's only a couple more things to weight and then we're home free. Okay. So if I hide the head, okay, we've got the eyes. So what we want to do is we want to go to the eyes. Okay. So the eyes, so we'll go to the eye right. Okay. And once again, I'll take off the subdivision surface and there take off zero out the weighting there okay i'll go to the other one and also zero out the weighting okay and then for these i'll just um select all and i'll weight that to the um to the right eye okay and then i'll go to the other eye i'm sorry that, that's that's a left eye this is the type of thing that's going to mess you up Okay, if you're not paying attention. Okay, so, and then it'll cause double work for you. So we don't want to do that to the right eye. We want to do it to the left eye. And I hope I didn't do that with anything else on this model yet because that's going to be a problem. So we're going to go over here and we're going to go. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Instead of the eye right, I'm going to choose the, the right eye. And we're going to wait that. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the hat. Oh, actually, there's another thing we got to do. Okay. We're almost there. So we're going to go to the hat. We're going to zero out its weights, we'll select all the points, and we're just going to weight that 100% to the head. Okay. And then finally, this, okay, this is how we're going to do the teeth and the tongue. There are the teeth, zero out its weights, select all the geometry on the top, right? So all that geometry on the top is selected, okay? And we're going to weight it to the head. But as far as the, the bottom teeth, 
Okay, we're going to weight that. Oh, the tongue is a separate thing. Okay, whatever. Um, we're going to select that and we're going to weight that to the jaw. Okay, so that gets weighted to the head. This gets weighted to the jaw and the tongue, zero at its weight. We're going to, we're going to, it's all selected. We're going to, we're going to put it all onto the jaw. All right, and now we're done. Congratulations. You've weighted the entire character has been now weighted to the rig and we're ready to start examining it. Okay. So let's just pause briefly here so we don't run out of too much time. And are, has, has there been any questions or comments, Ellie? Yes. Yes. That was really cool to watch by the way. We um, have a few questions saying, like the attention to detail and looks like you need to have like practice in this kind of in this kind of topic to yes really absolutely thank down. you so much yeah but we did have a few questions i didn't want to kind of ruin the flow because right. we were you know you you were you were well into it and so i thought i'd wait until a good time to yeah. ask the question so going back to pretty much the start let me just find this first question. Here we go from Richard. Can you keep the auto weighting and just fine tune it? So this was right at the start when you started doing. You can, the, and, and, and that's viable. That's completely viable way to do it. Yes. And, and however, a lot of times you end up doing all the weights over anyway. Like, like you think, actually not always, actually, maybe if you're like, you know, a perfectionist or like, you're just, you know, a nut about it like me or something like that yeah. you'll end up doing it like all over anyway so you might as well start from zero but yeah but 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 it might be useful to you to see what the auto weighting did did because it's based on you know it's based on some sort of like logic you know what i'm saying so uh so it might be interesting to see what what the auto weighting did so it's a good question and and actually, probably when you're starting out, you know, th th there is a good reason to why you would want to do that. Yes. Cool. That's great. Thanks. Sure. So we've got another one from Christian and he was wondering, could you could you actually weight it at, let's say, 66 percent and then add it up to 100 percent by just painting over it again? Yeah, you can. You can. So. You know, there are some, um, what you would have to do is you have to use this add mode, okay? Um, cool. And uh, yeah, you would have to, actually on the weight tool here, you can use this add mode here. So if you put like 10% in, in the strength, you can just keep painting 10% onto the weight and stealing it from the other joint. You can do that. Okay. And that's yeah, a personal, that's a question of personal, you know, preferences when you work yes yeah Good yeah question. of course so another one from denitris is there a way to increase or decrease the weighting of all points respectively by a certain amount is there a function to automatically balance incorrect weighting after i've painted them well you know keep in mind like i said which we've talked about in previous classes i would refer you especially to, to class number two when point weighting was you know, man, was was talked about. You know, about this order normalization because you'll see what happens is that in like the body, for example, you know, all of these these okay, these are all going down this list are all the points in your model. Every single point in your model has a unique number. So on the body, there's actually 360 points. Now there's a lot more points when you factor in the, the subdivision surfaces, but as far as like the cage is concerned, it's 360 points on the cage, okay? Now, and you can see the weighting actually on each joint because these are each joint that's being used by the body, okay, on the top and the color of the joint. So you can actually see exactly how much each point is being weighted. Like for example, you know, over here you see 75 and 25%. This is obviously around the shoulders or the knees or the elbows. Okay. 
But you'll notice, let's try to get to some of the finger joints because uh, in the finger joints, we had like one where it was like, you know, whatever. But the point is, is that whatever it is, how, whatever the weight is, the total weight of all of these joints has to be 100%. So you could actually go in and 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 if you were to like make one of these joints, like for example, you were to make this 25, you were to type it in and make it a 30, okay? You actually look at what happened. It lowered the 75 to a 70. Why? Because auto normalization is on. It wants to keep it at 100%. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems, okay? So that's why, for example. If you uncheck this auto normalize and you were to create this to be like 30% over here, okay, now the joint is going to be weighted at 105%, and then you're having it's flagging you. This is illegal, okay? So the thing is, is you don't really want to do that. As far as the question was concerned, can you just automatically reduce all of the joints or something? Not really, because you're going to run into problems with the normalization or something like that. Um, I mean, you know, there might be ways to do it, but generally point weighting is the kind of thing you'll ask anybody who does this kind of stuff. It's like, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a job, you know, I mean, you have to get in there and, and really um, pay attention to each joint because each one gets weighted differently a lot of the times. Cool. Yeah, thanks for showing or explaining about the auto normalization as well. That was really, really sure. cool to see them update as you changed one of the um, point rates. Yes, thank you. So we've got two more quick questions, um, but I don't want to take too much of the time. Um, so Aram was wondering regarding weighting extremities, is it based on the relationship to the joint that moves first in the chain, i.e. foot weighted to hip first? Um, say that one more time. So weighting of extremities, is it based on their relationship to the point that moves first in the chain, i.e. foot weighted to hip first? So, I mean, basically, when it comes to the extremities, basically, you know, it's not really based on that. It's based on, like, how much influence that joint is going to have on that point. For example, in the points in the middle of the thigh, okay? They're really just influenced by this joint, okay? It doesn't matter what moves first, what moves second. They're not gonna be influenced. However, these joints are gonna be influenced a little bit by this, this shin joint. And these points are gonna be influenced more by this one, but it's still gonna have some, some influence from the thigh point, which we're, we're actually gonna see this in action very soon. And uh, and these have less of an influence of the thigh and more of an influence of the shin. And then when you get down to around here, these points are just influenced by the shin. It's not influenced at all by the by the other joint. So it's really just you know it's not a question of who goes first, who goes second. It's just a question of which like for example, you know these points get influenced by the chest and this joint. You know. So that's the way you have to think about it. It's not really a question of what moves first, what moves second. Great, cool, thanks. Yeah, I've got a, got a thanks from Aaron there. And um, from- Thank you, Aaron. And like I said, Aaron I don't know why well. I can't really read the shift, I, uh, the, the chat this time. I would have, uh, you yeah, know, I so- Yeah, I thought it would, it would have kicked in by now. It doesn't really matter. Been... I'll read it later. So if anybody wants to write anything, I'll read it later. But go on, what was the last question? So yeah, the last one here, let me just find it. So this is from, from Freddie. Is it easier to select all the parts with the select tool and after apply the weight, or apply the selected weight? Well, no, not really. I mean, what I was doing before is when I was zeroing out, you know, like for example, in the body, like if you select over here, you know, like if I could select one joint at a time, which are, that's what I was doing, or two or three. But if I select this, it selects all the joints. So you could apply all of the points, you know, to all of the joints or a point to all of the joints, 
or what you could do actually is you could actually for example if i were to to go ahead and i were to select a joint like let's say the spine joint whatever since it's the first one so usually what i do is i select a point and i say apply selected right but if i hit apply all right actually i'll do this so you can see okay so if i hit apply all to this thing look what it does it applies all the points to that one joint okay so you you might have a reason to do that maybe you want to give everything a hundred you know to one joint and then steal away you know weights to other joints as you go that could be a way that you like to work or you might have a reason why you want to to do that but that's what this apply all is so you can apply all the points to a joint or to several joints like if you have two joints and you hit apply all they'll all get weighted distributed 50 50 to those two joints perfect cool yeah. Cheer cheers joe yeah thanks for sure thank you pause with the thank questions and yeah thanks for no, no, no problem. Thanks to everyone for, for those great questions as well. But yeah, I'll let you I'll let you carry on. OK, very good. So. So actually, so now that this thing is weighted, OK, is that what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to move out of the binding tab of the character object. And now we're going to move into the animation area. Okay? So when I go to the animation, two things happen. Oh, by the way, you know, something that's actually interesting in the adjust mode, I forgot to tell you this, uh, in the adjust mode. So we're going back two classes ago or last class. Okay. Um, sometimes like for example, and I had done this already. Well, actually this is not really that important, but like if you switch from components to controllers, right? Sometimes what it is, is that some of these controllers like um all right what's going on here okay controllers right okay we're in the adjust mode there we go you know what actually let me not let's not um let's not get get go off on a tangent that's going to take us on like take too much time so just let's forget this let's go back to the animate mode all right so when we switch from binding to animate Okay, what happens is two things that happens. First of all, you'll notice that the bones disappear because when we were binding, we could see the bones. Okay, and when we switch to the animate tab, we instead see what are called the controllers. And these are really what you want to use to animate with. Somebody went and set up all these controllers so to make it easy to animate. You don't need to see the bones. If you didn't have the controllers, you need to get access to the bones to animate them. OK, but in the but really, we don't want to have any of those bones show, or really when you switch to this, you don't have any of those bones shown. OK, so let's go through some of the um, the controls of this rig with the controllers. And also, by the way, you'll notice that in the object menu. OK. What's showing now are the controllers, just the controllers, like when I was in the binding mode. Actually, you see all the bones in the rig and the controllers, okay? But in the animate mode, you only see the controllers. So keep that in mind. So what I'd like to do now is I wanna go through some of the different uh, features of this rig, okay? So let's start, um, let's start with the hands, why not? So right now, when this comes in, it comes in with IK hands which means just like we've looked at before, let's go back to the uh, uh, model mode or object mode, okay? Otherwise you can't really select the controls. If you're in point mode, you're gonna try to select the control. You're gonna be like, hey, what's going on here? I can't move this, okay? That's because you have to be in this mode here, okay? So now if I select this, all right, uh, I can animate it. So right now we've got this, um, we're in IK mode, which means that just like the lamp or whatever, and what's going on? Something's not working. Okay, I think that what I did, please God, don't tell. Oh, you know what? I don't have to worry about it because I've got it saved anyway.
but I think that what I did is I messed up the control on the body. Let me just see something here. Okay, I got rid of all my weights on the body. All that hard work that we did is gone. But not to worry because I did save a version of this model exactly at the point that we're at right now. So it's really no skin off my back and it's nothing to really worried about it. But when, but here it is right here. Okay. There it is right here. We're in the exact same thing. Okay. We're in the character mode. We're in the animate um, area. Okay. So no problem. Okay. Everything is fine. Oops. So anyway, so what happens is that you have an IK thing like that. So you understand, Ellie, right, why that happened? Because I zeroed out all the weights on the body before? What? So how, how you cleared them out, you mean? Yeah, before when I was showing, when I was asking. Yeah. Okay, so, that, so, so that's why that happened. Otherwise, that wouldn't happen. So you don't, nobody has to worry about that. So okay. anyway, so... So right now you have a control, an, an IK control with this IK tab tag, you know, and it's it's like the same as any IK tag as as we had before. You know, you have this, you've got your IK pole over here, so which lets you you know position the the elbow the way you want to. You know, you can rotate the hand. You know, we've gone through some of this stuff before. You know, in, in previous classes. Uh, this is a you know just an IK setup for the hand, okay. And you can animate that way a lot of things, okay. However, I will say this: arms, unless arms, unless you have a reason to make them IK, are usually animated in FK mode, okay. So, for example, if the character so and and if the if the character is like gesticulating, you know, like like making gestures with the hand or waving or saying somebody stop or whatever. In other words, if the hands are moving freely, okay, you want to use FK mode for the hands. Okay. But there are some examples why you would want to use IK mode for the hands, and we're gonna look at those later. Okay, but so but the way that you that you you um, choose uh, and and we're gonna look at those later. I actually have some examples which I've made actually, um, like for example in this example. Okay, we have our character here, and he's at the gym, and he's like doing some, what you might call it, you know, pull pull push-ups with his body. Okay, you notice that the hands are not moving, right? Because really the only thing that's moving here is you're just animating the torso. Okay, you're just animating the torso. So let's go to another frame. Let's go to like this frame here. See that? You're just animating the torso. It's very easy. So you see how, how easy it is to get that IK mode is so easy makes the whole thing easy. You're just animating one thing rather than having to animate the elbow and everything, okay? So, and for example, with the FK, IK hand, you could just move it over to here, let's say, if you wanted to, okay? And now if you move the pelvis up and down, okay, now the hand is over there. So you can see that there are really good reasons why you would wanna have, um, why you would want to have IK hands. That's one reason. We're going to look at another reason, okay, later on, time willing and God willing, is that if I were to take this box here, okay, and if I were to like move it, look at like the hands are like, as a matter of fact, look at this thing. See, it looks like he's pushing the box, right? It's another use of IK hands. You can't do this easily with IK hands because then you would be overshooting in, moving it back, moving the box, moving the hand, trying to get the angle right. And with IK, it makes it much easier and much faster, something that would take a really long time to do. In this case, pushing a box. In the other case, going on in a parallel bars. Okay? Actually. 
or for so what you want to do is you want to click on this thing there's this little thing out here okay it looks like a little like diamond okay you want to click on this diamond and under hand controls there's a hand control here it's called ik to fk switch okay if i were to drag that ik to fk switch over like this you've just switched the hand it's there's no more first of all you'll notice number one is is that you see, there's nothing here and there's nothing here. There's just the IK handle. As soon as I start dragging that over you until you get to the other side, now you have three controls and the IK handle has disappeared. See that IK handle over here? Yeah, you drag that over and it's disappeared. Okay, so now what you can do is you can rotate the hand like, you can you can rotate the arm like this. You can rotate the arm like this, okay? And what you can do, like let's say for example, you wanted him to say, you know, stop. Okay, by the way, I'm gonna rotate this hand a little bit, like over to the, like that. And you'll notice that you see how nicely these points are rotating along this joint. That's because of that, remember when we were waiting in the forearm, there were two bones in the forearm? There was a forearm twist one and a forearm twist two, and we weighted these points differently. So as a result, what's happening is that you're getting a nice twist in the edge flow of the forearm, okay? And then for example, like let's say, you know, you wanted to have his hand say, go up like that, and then you were to take this, you know, this, this thing over here, and uh, you know, you, you could say, you can go ahead and uh, all right, this thing over here. It's not an IK, you see you'd be tempted to pick it up and want to move it, but that's not how it works in FK. You have to go to the joint before it and you have to rotate it, okay? So, you know, if he's like saying like, stop, stop, you know, move back, right, like that, or he's talking and you want him to like, you know, do something like move this hand, you know, move this a little bit to, to here and, you know, and then move, rotate this joint a little bit to here and then rotate it down a little bit like that and whatever. Okay, it's just all done with FK. Okay, really the, the, the idea that you're gonna, that, that you've, you're gonna have with, um, with the difference between IK and FK is that you use FK when you want the hand or the arms or, or any body limb to follow the body. Because now the thing is, is that is that if I were to take this pelvis and move it up and down, you see the arms are falling. But look at that, look at the IK hand. This one, this hand is still on IK. See, so you have this going up and down. The other one's not. Okay. So rule number one, okay, is that in many cases, when you want the hand to be following the body and the arms to be following the body, you want to use FK arms, very important. When you want the hands to be stuck on something, like in, in one case we had our hands stuck on the uh, parallel bars or in the one where he was pushing the box, okay? Then you want to use um, IK for the hands, okay? Hands are IK here. Okay, the hands over here are IK, okay, like that. So, so, but however, now here's a little walk cycle that was done with our good friend, it's not playing in real time, with our good friend C-Motion, okay, because you could use C-Motion on character objects too. See, there's a C-Motion thing here just like the C-Motion that we've been doing in previous episodes. One of my favorite tools in Cinema 4D, okay? Got a nice little walk cycle here. But notice that the arms are, are IK. This would be very hard to do with FK arms. So the, the whole thing is, is that the purpose of this little lecture here is to say that FK arms are important.
and so are IK arms, depending on what you're doing. Let's go to this one over here, okay, and let's actually make that an, uh, an FK arm too, and let's just kind of bring his arms to the side a little bit, and uh, we might want to rotate it back a little bit, and we're going to take this elbow joint, and we're going to rotate it forward a little bit. So, by the way, you notice on the shoulders, remember how we weighted, like, we weighted this a special way to kind of preserve some of the the uh, shape of the shoulder. Like, for example, because they're weighted a certain way, you see they kind of like behave nicely. Because remember, this is at 25% to the collar while while the other one is at, at uh, and these are at 50. And then this one's at 25% to the shoulder. Okay, so what's happening is that you're getting a nice, you're getting a much nicer thing here. And you'll notice that these points here are weighted less than 50 because I, I don't want them to bend so much into the body. I want them to kind of stop there. If I had 50, they'd go further into the body. It kind of looks a little bit weird. Okay. So, so anyway, so you got you have the arms here like that, right? So let's talk about the hands a little bit. Okay, so we spend all that time. So this joint over here, like for example, you know, you can use to to uh, rotate the wrist, okay, if you want to. So let's talk about the hands already a little bit. So as you can see, there are these three ones that kind of stick out, and those are useful because like what happens is that they curl the whole finger. Okay, now you notice as you know, look at the deformations here, because remember how we weighted everything. We weighted stuff so that way there'd be a little give between the fingers. Okay, they're not so like rigid. Otherwise, your fingers look weird. Okay, and they look like like wooden and and not right. Okay, so we we carefully weighted it so that way we have a nice deformation. Okay, see that. So that's what these are for, actually. So I can go ahead and I can rotate this one. Actually, that one's a little bit too much. So we'll, we'll just rotate that a little bit. And then we'll take this one. We'll rotate this one a little bit. Okay. And you can rotate the other way, too. So, for example, if you want to go out the other way, you can go a little bit out the other way as well. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate that a little bit back. And then we're going to rotate this a little bit back. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a more. Okay, now for the thumb too, what's actually important about the thumb, and which is actually kind of important about the other ones too, but before I talk about that, actually, I do want to say that you also have individual controls for each of the digits, and that's what these are for. See, so if you want to control, so a lot of times, especially if you want them to be grabbing something, you kind of get them some of the way with the big curls. And then if you want, you can get a little bit more, you know, precise with some of the other ones like that. Get a little bit more precise. So now, and then there's also this one here um, like this which actually rotates kind of like the whole inside the hand. These are actually not really used that much, but they could be, you know, because hands are flexible things, man. You know, you could do a lot with your hands. We built a whole world with them. So the thing is, is that here we have this joint right here. This actually is an important one here because this lets you move the thumb away from the hand. See that? So that's actually really useful. Okay, so you can move that, and you could also move it this way. So important one there, and then you've got the curl of the hand there. Okay, like that, you know, and um, you know you might want to move that away from the hand a little bit, you know whatever. And then these for the digits of the hand. So, you know, we'll just curl the hand a little bit, curl the finger a little bit. 
and then that'll be the hand. So those what are what all the controls of the hand do. Okay, let's move on. There's a control right here, very useful control actually, okay, where that lets you move the collarbone up and down. So this control is useful, especially if you want to shrug the shoulders, like, and you want them to be like, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about, okay? It's actually very useful for the shrugging of his shoulders. So there's one on both sides, obviously, and you can do both of them, like if he's hunching, you know, hunching his shoulders, okay? Now there's another one here, I mean, but it's also useful, that shoulder one is useful if he raises his arm a lot, you can actually use that to fix it a little bit. Okay, the collar, give it a little bit of a better, better motion there. Okay, now, actually we'll do the head last. So then you've got this one here, you've got this one. And this one over here lets you move the joint side to side. Now, you'll see something that's happening that's a little bit funny, is that the arms aren't really following the shoulder, okay? They're staying like in the thing. Now that could be useful, you know, like for example, if you wanna, if his arms were out a little bit more, let's say his arms were out to here and here, okay? And then you were to take this area, which I like to think of as um, underneath the rib cage. This is kind of like right beneath his sternum. So you see, that could be a useful little thing to do. Okay. You can also move it back and forth. Right. But what happens if you don't want that to happen? Let's say you want the you don't you you want the arms to actually rotate with the torso. So if you click on these controls here, and where it says FK arm follow shoulder, remember this is actually a user data. We set up a user data of our own in a previous class. I believe it was session two. Okay, but this one over here, if we click that, now we go ahead and we we say FK arm follow shoulder 100%. By the way, you could actually do it 50% if you want, or 30% or 60%, whatever. So now if we actually select this, now the arms are actually following the shoulders. Okay? So keep in mind that that is controlled inside of this shoulder um, collar control. Okay? So that's actually useful. Let's actually go ahead and let's say, here's the torso, very important control on our rig. Okay, the torso lets you bend, you know, the body. It also lets you rotate the body, you know, in one direction if you want to rotate them a little bit this way or this way, which is useful in walk cycles, okay? It also lets you sort of like bend the torso forward, like if you wanted to have them pick something up. You know, and you can combine that with some of these other spine joints, okay, to get a nice bend on the spine, okay? And uh, so that's the torso joint. However, there's another joint here, okay? There's another joint here. It's called the pelvis control. And with the pelvis control, you can do some nice fun things with this. Like, for example, if I were to rotate it back and forth, you kind of have, you know, you kind of like have them do a little, well, um, kind of like a dancing thing. Okay. Like, or side to side. You could be like shaking his hips. Right. Or you could, you know, do it like, you know, like a belly dancer. Like you might want to be doing a belly dancer. Now, there's a little problem I have because of the way the belt is set up. I would have to actually fix that better because there's a little intersection here. But I could fix that. Okay, I could fix that. But in 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 small motions, 
you know, if I were to hide the belt, you wouldn't have that at all right now. But I can make make a better belt thing, you know. Then then you can really have them sort of like you know dancing all around, but whatever. Um, but the way that I had it, you know, I just was doing something simple here. I just had a belt as a separate object. So that's what the pelvis joint is. Okay, it lets you animate the pelvis for like shaking hips and stuff like that, or even to get a pose, like I'm put more weight on one leg. All right, so moving right along. Okay, so we've talked about all the controls here. Uh, okay, now let's start getting into the feet. Okay, and there's a lot of controls in the feet. So, for example, we already know that we can take a foot and we can lift it up, and then we can take a foot control and we can lift it up, and that's how we can animate the feet. Okay, it's an IK foot. We talked about IK feet in the last class when we set up some IK feet on that square guy. So it works the same way. It's an IK foot. However, and then, for example, like let's say, well, we just talked about it. Let's say, for example, I were to um, put this foot a little forward. And if, let's say, I were to point it out a little bit like this, and if I were to move it, you know, a little bit to the, to the side. And uh, now, now you'll notice actually on the IK feet, you'll notice that the IK pole here for the foot is moving with the IK foot. And that's the way they just set it up. Some people like to do that. Some people don't. Okay. But it's an automatic way that it always points the knee in the direction of the toe. Okay. Which is actually useful. You can actually go on there now and you can also move this pole if you want to have some custom motion. Okay. But default is that it actually moves with the foot. That's a nice little thing. So let's say, for example, I had that. I shifted the weight onto one leg. You know, I were to take the pelvis a little bit and. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll raise, actually, I'll raise the torso up a little bit. And I were to take the pelvis. And if I were to rotate this a little bit like that, you know, and then I were to take the, uh, this joint and kind of like, I mean, this control and kind of move it a little bit like that, you know, I can, you know, create kind of like a cool swagger type of pose, you know, and then I could, for example, move this back a little bit. To here, move this up. Maybe a little down this way, you know, take the this thing and move it like that. And you know, basically get him to kind of like, or maybe, for example, I want to move this up, like if he's doing like that. So, you know, you can get a lot of different things with that. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead. Let me go back a little bit, okay, to some of these different things. And actually, why don't I bring the foot back? Okay, so now we've got this. Back to here. Now, there's a lot of controls for the foot, and they exist right here. So if I click on the IK control, you get all these controls for the foot. So let's see what they are, okay? So first of all, what you have is you have like a little knee twist, okay? Which is the same as moving the IK pole, you know, this thing up here, okay? It's the same. So it's just a little convenient place for it if you want it, okay? Something else here, it's called the foot roll, okay? Now, this is kind of a handy little thing. If you move it to one, to the to, to the left, right, to the negative area, it, it rolls the foot back onto the heel. But then if you go into the positive direction, it rolls it onto the ball of the foot, okay? So it's back, forward roll, okay? It's like a rolling of it. So, you know, you never know when you might want that 
in, in, in something you're animating. Okay. And then what's happening is that you've got another one here. You've got a wiggle. Okay. So then this lets you wiggle your toes. Okay. You might want to have a little toe wiggle, like, like a little baby might be wiggling their toes in joy when they see their bottle. Could be. Then you've also have like what's called now this one's important actually. Called the ball rock. Now you if you remember in our last class when we were adjusting the rig around the feet there were all these little adjustment points that we were putting in different places we had put one in the back and that's what's actually causing this this system to work the position of those little things so you have to make sure you put them in the right place if you want it to work as expected. So the ball rock, what it lets you do is it lets you rock your foot back and forth. Okay, so like, you know, if your character is climbing a mountain or something, you know, these could be really useful. Okay. Um, you can see how it's working there. Okay, so that's the ball rock. You have something else here, actually, that's kind of really useful. It's called the ball twist. Okay, so like, for example, if what it does is it twists the foot on the ball where's the ball the ball is like right around here okay so this could be useful for example like if he's like extinguishing an ember on the ground okay like maybe a little ember jumped out of the fire and he wants to to extinguish it and actually it can be used to great effect if you put in a little bit of a foot roll like that on there and then you use the ball twist. Now you're just kind of like leaning into it and putting more pressure onto that area. Okay. Now, now we've come to something very important. And we're probably not going to get to everything today. We're going to have to actually save it all for the last class, but but save some things for the last class, actually. But what it is, is that um, we're going to talk about what's IK squash and stretch. Very important rigging concept to understand and to be able to use. Okay. So you notice that if I take a foot, right, and if I were to take a foot and if I were to start moving it, like let's say over here, at a certain point, it's going to run out of like leg. To bend you know i've got this leg i'm bending and i'm moving it i'm moving it i'm moving it and then all of a sudden it doesn't want to rent came to the end and if i keep moving the control it kind of like it wants to get there and it's pointing to it okay but it can't can't reach anymore okay it's come to the end of its line okay but if i start moving it back at a certain point ah now i'm back OK, so the question that is that that's what this stretch is. And this is used a lot, particularly in cartoony animation. It's not used so much in realistic animation because, at, you know, there's a limit to how much your your limbs can go. OK, so. But in cartoony anime, but but it, it actually can be used in realistic things. If you have an IK set up, you know, like let's say you're doing taffy or something, or you're doing some kind of like a, a, a thing that's made out of rubber, then you might want to have it stretch. But like, for example, let's say you're working on The Incredibles and you're using, you know, you're animating Elastigirl, for example. Then what happens is that let's take this stretch and let's bring it all the way up to 100%. And now let's see what happens. So we're coming to the end of our line here, okay? And then when it hits the end, it just keeps going, okay? It's stretching out towards that control. So that's actually really useful, especially for, um, for uh, whatchamacallit, for, uh, cartoony stuff you know like you know you want to stretch sometimes you don't want you just want to stretch it a little bit you don't have to make it go out too much but you just want to stretch it a little bit okay now if you want to set this up on your own okay i'm going to make a new project 
because you might not want to always use this with the character object. We're going to just go ahead and we're going to make a joint. We're going to make two joints. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to, <clears throat> we're going to make, let me hide this weight manager because we're not using it anymore. And the thing is, is that I'm going to go ahead to, I'm going to make a cylinder. Okay. And I'm going to make a cylinder, a child of the first joint. This should look familiar from way back in the lamp days. And we're, we're just going to zero it out onto that joint. Okay. And we're going to make the cylinder um, kind of like be aligned to the joint this way. Like that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy that cylinder actually i'll make another cylinder and we'll just going to give it to the other joint zero it out okay and then give it on its plus z and we're going to move that somewhere into this joint here okay and then if i go to my um perspective view you have two joints and what i'm going to do for the joints for the joints i'm going to tell them in the um object display i'm going to say display them as a line okay so I, i'm they're just not displayed as joints anymore i mean as bones anymore the displays as lines okay in this particular case then i'm going to go to the top one here okay and actually i'm going to display my 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 lines here i'm going to go to the top one here I'm going to right click it and I'm going to give it a, um, a a rigging tag. I'm going to give it an IK tag. Okay. And I'm going to tell it for the last joint, for the last joint in this IK tag, I'm going to take this joint and I'm going to make it go to the this end joint. So I've just set up an IK chain. It's just not, nothing really that uh, that important. I mean, that that difficult to understand. And then for the goal, I'm going to give it a goal, right? And uh, I'm going to say add goal. There's the goal. And for the goal, I'm going to give it, you know, whatever. I can give it like a a, um, a cube, right? So I've got a little cube there for my goal. And make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I've got the goal a little bit bigger, just so I can see the goal. A little bit smaller, actually. So now the thing is that, so I've got like basically an IK chain right now the thing is is that um so like i said if i go to the end of this it wants to go forward but it can't because it's like it can't reach it okay so what i'm going to do here's how you set up squash i mean stretch on an ik joint chain so if i click on the ik tag we talked about this already we talked about pole vectors but there's something new under the sun down here. It's called squash and stretch. So if I open that up, right? And if I go over here to the stretch, I'm gonna tell it stretch it 100%. So now what happens is that this is gonna go, it's gonna go, and then what's happening is that it's gonna keep stretching out the, I, the, the IK chain after that. However, there are some options we can have here. One of them is called the position option. And the position option is going to tell these, whatever's on these bones, whether it's point weighted or parented, in this case it's parented, could be point weighted. The thing is, is that it's going to maintain the position, okay, of the of these of of the things on the bone. Okay. That's okay if you if that's what you want. Okay, there's another one here, it's called uniform scale. And if I choose this one, what's gonna happen is that as it goes up, it starts scaling up, bigger. Could be useful depending on what you're trying to do, okay? Like you might wanna have it get bigger. There's something else here, it's called bone scale. What bone scale does is that if, if you start scaling it out, it actually scales those things out to the size of the bone. 
this is starting to get more useful. Okay. And finally, the last thing here that I'm going to show you is something called volume scale. Now, what this does is that this scales it out, but it also tries to, to maintain the volume of the thing uh, of the geometry. And this is the most useful if you want to do a sort of like a squatchy, stretchy, squetchy. It's actually called squetching. If you want to do a squetchy type of, 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 of motion where the leg is kind of like stretching out like in an elastic way, it's the most cartoony. Okay? So that's what that is. Okay? Now, there's something else here. It's called squashing. So far, we've been doing stretching. Now, squashing is actually less important than, than stretching. Sometimes you don't even use squash, okay? Because what squash does is that if I were to do this, what it really is just doing is, is, that, is that it's, it's uh, let's do squashing, let's do squ squashing with the same volume scale, okay? So what it does is it stretches out and it also stretches it out and in okay so that's not really that useful because when I, when when i have enough room i want the jo the limbs to bend i don't want them to just keep stretching like that okay that's not really what i'm interested in however okay however the thing is, is that what some people do is they do a little bit of, of like maybe 35% of, of squashing. So there's some bending and some squashing. And that's what squash and stretch is. Okay. And that's how you set it up using an IK tab. Okay. It's a very useful tool, especially if you're planning to do, um, if you're planning to do character, oops, animation, I mean, cartoony st style animation, there's a little bit of s stretching going on in the rig with that. And finally, the last three things, and then we're going to stop for some questions. And then, um, so, if, and then the, what we didn't get to today, we'll get to another time. But the thing is, is that, um, because these things always take a little bit longer than you think they're going to take. But the thing is, is that there's there's what are called individual controls. Okay. And the individual controls, there's also this little show pole vector, which um, hides the pole vector if you don't want to see it in your animation. Because like I said, the pole vector is actually between the knee twist and the fact that the pole vector is a child of the IK. Um, uh control so that way if you ro rotate the ik control see the pole vector is moving anyway so you could just hide it if you want okay but there are some other controls here okay and then and these are actually kind of important so one of them is the heel now the heel lets you rotate the heel okay so this come becomes important because when you're starting to do like walking or animating your character the question becomes is that what should i do because if i move this up to here let's say or up to here or whatever i might want to put some rotation onto that heel so i can take the whole ik control ik foot control and i can just rotate the whole ik foot control down like that and you can do that if you want Okay, but there can be some issues when you do it like that. Okay, and what are those issues? Well, like for example, let's say, for example, let me take the pelvis and let me move this pelvis down a lot down to about like right here. Okay, and now I want to take the IK foot control, right? And I want to have that move that over there, right? 
And let's say, for example, I want the foot to rotate up, okay, like that. So I do it with the, with, I rotate the foot up. But you'll notice that what's happening is that this control is not rotating from the heel where this would actually be rotating from. It's actually rotating from the ankle. And as a result, the heel gets pushed into the ground. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, so the thing is, is that what you want to do is you want to take the thing and you want to use this control because now this control is actually rotating the heel from the right place. You can see that what's happening is that it's rotating it from the right place. If you had a plane down there, well, this plane is obviously not, oh, okay, I'm too low on the, on the foot. So the foot should be over here on the ground. And so should this foot. Actually, the whole character is kind of low, actually. That's what the problem is. This whole character needs to be moved up to the ground. Or I could have just moved the plane down and made it easy on myself. But let me not do that. So let's say, for example, we'll, we'll just give this a color of like, you know, whatever, blue. Okay, and we'll give that plane a color. Okay, so now if you'll notice, that's what's happening is that if I were to select this IK control here, and if I were to rotate the heel, it's rotating from the right place. Okay, whereas if I were to actually rotate the IK, control like this it's not it's pushing the heel into the ground okay so what i always do if i'm creating a walk cycle or whatever okay is that let's say for example you know you have a side view and you're at this point of the walk cycle you know i'll raise this thing up a little bit you're at this point of the walk cycle I, or not walk cycle, but if he's just walking, I'm just animating him, right? Because if I'm going to do a walk cycle, I'm going to use C motion. Okay, so let's say I'm just animating him walking, right? So here, once again, I want to use that heel control like that. And you can actually, by the way, uh, I don't have time to get into it now, but you can actually access all these controls in the C motion system. But anyway, so the thing is, I would want to do that. And then later on, when his foot's going to be on the ground and his pelvis is going to be forward a little bit, his torso is going to be forward a little bit, okay, and his foot's going to be on the ground, like over here, then I want to have this negative, like that, let's say. Okay, so this is a very useful thing, and I always want to keep this straight. I want to want to keep the you know you can rotate it if you want to. None of this is like set in stone, but I personally what I do is I keep this straight uh, and then rotate it with the heel. But that's not to say that you want to pick up the rotation tool and rotate this around. Go ahead. You certainly do that on the hands. Okay. So there's that. Okay. And then finally we've got the ball rotation, which is useful. Like for example, especially let's say. You know, you're rotating, uh, you're, you're animating him walk a little bit, okay? You're bringing this over to here, okay? And on this one, you want to rotate the ball because he's coming up a little bit, okay? So that's what the ball rotation is on the foot, okay? And then finally, we have this toe rotation, which is, um, which actually this one is a little bit, let me bring this back to zero. This is not really used that much, but you never know when you might want to use it, okay? And it rotates the foot from the tip of the toe, whereas the ball rotation rotates it from the ball of the toe. It's just another way to use it. And really quickly, actually, because I just realized now that I didn't, uh, I didn't talk about the head, okay? 
and that's too bad. So I'm just going to take three minutes now to talk about the head. Okay. If I were to take the, 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 the spine rotation, you notice that the head is pointing forward always. Okay. And what if I don't want it to point forward? Could be useful if you wanted to like, you know, have a uh, thing on the, uh, if we wanted to rotate this, if I wanted to rotate this down, the head is always pointing forward. Okay. But what if I don't want that? I can click on the head and I can say, follow the chest. And now it's not doing that anymore. Okay. So that's very important to do. Okay. Now, you also notice that if I were to take the head, okay, and if I were to rotate the head kind of like looking down or looking back, you know, let's say he's looking back, you notice that they're always looking at these eyes, okay? And in this case, the eyes, now that could be useful because these are the eye targets, right? So, for example, if I choose these eye targets and move them around like they're always going to follow. The eyes are going to follow these targets, okay, no matter what I do. Very useful to do. However, sometimes you want to rotate, you want to take the head, and you want to rotate the, it looking down, but you don't want to rotate, then you don't have to, you don't want to have to come and take the target of the head and move that down so it can look at that either. You don't want to do that. So what you could do on the head is you can click on the head and you can say, I mean, on the eyes. You click on the eyes and then you can say, follow head. And if you say, follow head, now they're always going to be following the head. Like that. Okay, so you can, for example, let him, if you want him, if he's like listening to some music, you know, we can have him go like that with the head. You want to turn the head a little bit, go ahead and turn the head, okay? You know, you want to clock the head a little bit while he turns like that. If he's, you know, checking something out, you can do that all with the head thing. Finally, the last thing we're going to talk about is that we set up a little bit of facial animation with the jaw. You could actually open up the jaw and close the jaw because we weighted it like that. So, for example, if we were to, you know, take this, move him forward, move his head back up or follow the chest if you wanted to, okay? And then we were to take the jaw, we can have him open up the jaw a little bit, or if you wanted him to like, you know, you could actually, uh-oh, that's why that's happening, okay? You can sort of like have him move his jaw around, it's kind of like if he's chewing. Now, this is sort of like the beginning of a discussion on facial animation. Facial rigging is a whole nother concept, okay? It's a whole nother thing that, you know, you can, we, you know, you, we could talk about, uh, but we're not there yet, and it's actually kind of beyond the scope of this course. We're going to talk about it a little bit next week, okay? We're going to talk about how you can set up lip sync and stuff like that, uh, and it, we're going to be beginning, but to really to get into the depth of facial rigging, okay, it would require a lot of, it would require hours, okay? So it would probably would require a whole nother course, okay, to be honest with you. So, but we can have a little bit of the jaw is doing it, and if you want, you can shift it a little bit or shift that, you know, up or however you want to do it, okay? And uh, have them chew a little bit, whatever. So, I think that that seems like it's a good point. You can have his lip go up a little bit now. But I think that's a good point where we probably want to stop and see where, how Ellie's doing, see what Ellie's got to say, see if there's any questions, and we're probably going to wrap it up there. Yeah. Yeah, so we have actually got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, but once again, uh, an incredible session. Some lovely comments that I'll that I'll. Um, I can't wait to read them later. Yeah, I'll read a few out at the end. But okay. we have got a couple of questions first, which I'm going to quickly go through if that's okay. Yeah. 
So Hannah was saying in the scene with the box, and she said, which is fantastic, by the way, did yeah. you fix the hand IK handles to the box of constraints? Like when he was- That's, that's a box? great question. That was something that, you know, I, I, I was meaning to talk about today because I actually even have something else here, which I would really like to talk about actually, because here's an example where the character starts out well, actually, it's not this one. It's this one. The character starts out in IK mode, right? See, the character's in being IK over here, right? And then he's going to kind of like, let me just play this back for you so you can see what's going to happen. So it's going slow because it's not playing in real time, but he jumps off this thing and he does a flip like that, right? So the thing is, is that, is that to, for this to be done effectively, is that he starts out in IK mode, right? But then there's a switch, because I want you to look at these feet over here, because they're going to disappear. Because he's going to switch from IK to, do you see how those feet, that those feet disappear? Okay, because what's going to happen, what happens is he switched to FK mode for the feet. Because sometimes you want the feet to be in FK mode. Otherwise, do you know how hard it would be to rotate those feet along with the body, you'd have to keep twisting them and keep moving them and keep twisting them to follow the body. Okay, so, but it's much easier. Now, but look what happens at the end. Look what pops up, boink. And then the feet switch back to IK. So this was an example that maybe we'll get to in another class where you wanna switch between FK and IK in the middle of a scene, okay? But let's go back to the box. Okay, Hannah, you were absolutely right. You deserve a little medal uh, or, or something, or, or I don't know what they give, extra gold star or whatever. Because actually you're right. Because really what happens is that in the, um, in the IK stuff, okay, just because it's a character at, at enemy, at, at, just because it's a character object, doesn't mean, by the way, if I select this thing, yeah, there we go. And if I put S, it'll go to that selection. So look at what I've added here. I've added a little constraint right here to that controller. And what kind of constraint is that? It's a parent constraint. And what is the parent? I made it this R handle. And what is this R handle? This R handle is this thing right here. See this thing right here? Okay. It's an R, it's a, it's a, it's a constraint to this handle. So wherever that handle goes, you know, maybe he want, you want, it was this kind of a thing you wanted him to do. Whatever this handle goes, as a matter of fact, if I choose both of these handles, because there's one on the other one too, and if I take the rotation tool here, and if I were to rotate both of these, look what he's doing now. It kind of looks like he's driving it, okay? Or you could rotate it this way. Like that can have it rotated this way. But since these handles are children of the box, okay, what's happening is that the box is, is rotating. So you're really just animating this. It looks like he's pushing it, okay? It looks like he's pushing it, but really the box, you're just animating the box. It's, see, so if you're smart in how to use IK and constraints, you could get the computer or you could get Cinema 4D to do the work for you. You don't have to do the work, as in this case. So very good, Hannah. You, that's exactly what I did. These IK controls have constraints to them, and they're constrained to these handles, which are children of the box. So wherever you move the box around, those IK handles. Now, there were no constraints when we talked about this thing. Right, because there were no constraints. By the way, these are IK feet. That was one of the purposes of doing this. But when you have that going like that, there's no constraints because you're not moving the hands. They're just there, okay? If I wanted to move them up, then they'd be up, okay? But if I were to move, let's say, these parallel bars around, then I would need constraints. So yes, you're right and very, very uh, astute of you to say so. 
That's great. Um, yeah. Just another quick one from David. Is there a standard for the shape and color for the different type of controllers? Or is it personal preference? There are, con there are standards, you know, um, people, there's naming standards, like you'll notice in the, in, the, uh, in the controllers, okay? You notice that the controllers are all named CON plus, okay? Uh, so you could you should name your controllers con plus okay uh as far as as um you know um the way that they name they usually talk about they usually are shaped in in what they do so for example like these are just splines by the way in case you didn't know okay they're just splines all right you see, I could actually change the way they look if I wanted to. Okay. But like sometimes people get fancy with the controllers and they get like all different looks to explain. Like, for example, the jaw controller kind of looks like what it is. It's like you're going to rotate this on this axis most of the time. So they made it look like that. The, the head controller which by the way is being rotated from down here, even though the controller is up here. They just did it so it's easy to, to, to move it. It's, you know, you know, you kind of, you know, you rotate it like that or you rotate it back. It doesn't really show, but so the answer really is, is that there are some, you know, what they did do though, is you'll notice that they made the ones on the right red and the ones on the left blue. So there is a little bit of a, a, um, you know a thing but so what you could do with these by the way is you could actually attach them to uh to something like let's say you had a fly flying around you could actually attach these as a matter of fact you could kind of like bring them in so you know you bring them in on the x oops oh okay so you have to go into the world and you say go on the X, you know, over here. And on this one, you bring it to the X over here. All right. So now it looks like he's looking right at something. So now if I select both of these, both of these eye controls, right? And then if I want to, I can attach them to like a fly. So now it looks like he's like always looking at the fly. But... The thing is, is that, is that, yeah, there are some conventions, but it's kind of up to you. But there are conventions, color conventions, maybe red for the left, blue for the right, con plus for the name. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Cool. And one one final quick one before we kind of wrap up. It's from Angela. Is it challenging to go back and fix rigging and waiting when I've already started the animation process? Uh, actually, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. Let's say you started the rigging, right? And then later on, you wanted to change your model, right? It's not really that challenging. All you have to do really, I mean, all you have to actually do is um, all you have to do is let's say, for example, on on this uh, this model, right? Let's say I go to the skin tab, right? Let me just see, because actually this is the character object. So let me just make sure I got this right. Yeah, well, you could do it a couple of ways. See, I'm thinking about about doing it ma if you're doing a manual rig, but I think all you have to do, let's say, for example, you go ahead and you want to go to the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the skin thing the skin object, and I am going to say, um, 
Actually, I'm going to go to the weight tool. Or actually, I'm going to go to the skin object. I'm going to uncheck it. Okay, so now it goes back into this default pose, right? And now, for example, if I go to the head and I go to the point mode, let's say, and let's say I want to give them a, a, a nose, like a big nose. So I'm going to select these points and these points, you know, and these points, and these points, and these points, and these points, right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give him like a long nose. Okay? Because he told a lie. And what I'm going to do is, there we go. And then if I put the skin object back on, well, actually, that works fine. But there's a, a thing. Let me actually undo that because there's a thing actually is that if you add points or whatever, what you do is you uncheck the skin object, you change your points, and then you hit reset bind pose. Okay. Or set, no, I'm sorry, you hit set bind pose. And then you turn this back on and then you're set. You're good to go. I don't have it set up, but that's what you would do. It's a little tricky to know what's happening, but it all has to do with this set bind pose and unchecking the, the skin object. I'm trying to remember if we did that in an earlier class when we were doing more simple stuff, but that's what you would do. You turn off the skin object, you make the changes, whatever you want to do. Okay. You hit set. You then you set the bind pose again. Maybe you want to change your bones or something, and then you turn back the skin object. That's what you would do. It, I can't really show it here because I'm not ready to show it, but that's what you would have to do. Cool. Cheers, Jay. Yeah. Cool. So I just that was such an incredible session. I just want to read out a couple of the comments for you because I know unfortunately you can't see. Um, yeah. You can't see thing, but I just wanted to let you know that. Let's show our let's show our our, our pictures. Yeah, let me let me come back on here as well. So I can see you again. And then let me just. Hey guys. So yeah, so from Benjamin, great webinar as usual. Thanks again, Thank you, Joe. Uh, Thank some you. people are suggesting a course on facial rigging. <laughs> uh, Andrew was saying, my brain is full. This has been great. Thanks. See Thank you, you on the next. Um, thank you thank you very um, much and hannah was saying thanks so much i'm proud got a compliment from the genius joe herman <laughs> thank so you that, hannah and thank you for all your now. for coming to all the sessions because i've seen your name before so thanks for being in the club and then one from david saying woohoo that was awesome once again thanks so much for everything opens a whole new world of creativity for me which i think is a great so one much. and thanks yeah, thank it's a lot of fun in. What's that? It was. I just had a couple of other quick thank yous coming in as I'm doing it from Freddie and Ahmed um, saying like, thank you so much for this webinar. And I would agree with them. It has been, it's been amazing. Let me quickly steal the screen back. Go right ahead. And then we and can. Thanks. And I will, I will be reading the chat later. So if I've missed anybody, I want to thank everybody for coming, for chatting, for participating, for asking questions and doing all of that. Yeah, no, sorry. I wonder what the issue might have been. Maybe it's because I made you an organizer after I started the session. That yeah, may have been it, so I'll make sure next time. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. As long as you're here, that's what really matters because you can I I'm here just just in awe of basically what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank just you. Answering. Questions in We've the got background. A mutual ab admiration society. Absolutely. So before we before we wrap up, um final week so not next week but april 20th do you have a quick quick chat about what we're going to be diving into on that final part yeah so we are going to discuss facial rigging but like i said you know we're all we're we're going to um uh you know we're, we're going to get into it to a certain level you know we'll 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 talk about the different approaches to facial rigging because there are two basic big approaches there's uh, a, um, a point-based approach 
which is kind of based on point level animation. And then there's a joint based approach. And, and then there's a combination of the two. And each side has its fans and each, each side has its benefits actually really to why you would want to use a point based approach and why would you use, want to use a joint based approach. So um, that's going to be, uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, but that actually gets into bullet point number two. We're going to try maybe to talk about some of the things which we took one wanted to talk about today a little bit more about when and why you want to switch between uh, FK to IK um, animation. So maybe we'll, we'll stick that in. There, oh, something very important we're going to talk about next week is the pose library, which makes the whole process of animation. Now, if you go to like a big studio like Pixar or, you know, wherever um, Illumination or whoever you happening to to go, they use what are called pose libraries a lot, okay? So the thing is, is that um, that makes the whole process, to, you can animate without pose libraries, but pose libraries make the whole process of animation a lot easier. And it lets you do two things. It lets you set, save poses. So let's say you're spending like, uh, you know, an hour getting that perfect pose, you know, like with his arms crossed and he's looking back kind of like a, you know, like a know-it-all or something like that, and his weight is shifted onto one leg, you know, and his other leg is pointing out the same thing. You know, we don't, you don't want to go through that every time, you know, that you want, you want to do it. So you can make like a pose library where it saves the poses of those joints, okay? Or you could, you know, for hands, you know, a pointing hand or a hand where he's kind of like, you know, I don't know, or pointing or whatever. So that's what the pose library is really useful for. It's actually also useful for if you're doing pose-based facial rigging. You could save all the phonemes or you could save expressions, you know, shock, you know, inquisitiveness, you know, uh, anger, you know, whatever, ha happiness, whatever, okay? You could save all of that into the pose library. So really, really, really useful and important tool when it comes to character animation. Uh, we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about IK dynamics. Okay. Cause we didn't, that's something else. We talked about squash and stretch. You know, we already talked about so many useful things about IK. The other thing you could do is you could set up dynamics. So for example, if you have like a little flower on somebody's head and they're moving their head, the flower, you don't want to have to animate that flower flapping around every time. So you could basically use IK dynamics for that or antennas on like a, a Martian, let's say you could use our IK dynamics, a ponytail. You could actually use it also for uh, parts of your body, you know, like, well, you know, hair, like if you're doing joint based hair, you can use it for that too. So that's IK dynamics. And then we'll also try to save a little bit at the end, if we can, of, to talk about spline IK, which is a good way to rig snakes and things like that. And that's really it. Cool. Sounds like it's going to be a great, a great final week, really, yeah. isn't it? Should be. I hope so. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. So just a quick reminder for everyone, if you do want to catch up on any of these uh, hands-on sessions or especially this this rigging workshop, you can head over to the Maximum Training Team YouTube channel. And what we'll do, we'll make sure part five is on there either later today or um, sometime tomorrow morning for you guys to, to catch up on. And another quick thing I did want to really, really kind of briefly talk about is so our next session is April 20th, and some of you may think, hey, that date rings a bell. And if you think that, it's because it's the Max on Spring launch event, and that's actually happening an hour before our session. So our session is 9 PST, and our launch is happening at 8 AM um, our PDT. I'm not, I'm not the best with time zones, as you can see. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be diving into um, some exciting updates for all of the Maxon products. So uh, save the date for two reasons, this and uh, the Maxon launch. Yeah. Yes. Um, once again, double, thank double. you so much. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. No, I was, I was just going to thank you for for all the amazing stuff that you've been putting together for this for this workshop, and I'm and I'm really sad that we're going we're going to be going into the final session. Um, I've it's been it's been such like a great workshop, and I know we've still got two hours together uh, with everyone, 
but it's it's been it's been so great and as you can see by the lovely like thank yous and the comments throughout this entire thing people have been loving it and so yeah That's i'm wonderful. excited for maybe we'll do it again sometime soon absolutely and, uh, I, i'd be definitely but no, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun i really want to thank you i mean well i mean you know we'll save the thanks and everything to we'll to save it all for yeah, yeah. <laughs> for two Thank weeks time yeah, but, exactly. yeah, we'll it. yeah it's been great uh, so have a lovely rest of your day joe and have a lovely rest of your day to everyone who is uh, still on here with us and we will catch you in two weeks time thank you thank you very much thank you everybody and uh and like i said i'll i'll read the comments later and i look forward to doing that and, and see you all on the next one sounds good Okay. <laughs> See you Bye soon. Now. Bye. Bye. Bye.